Well, hello, y'all. This is Brother Lee Whaley here at Crusader for Christ Podcast Hour. Coming to you today with some very, very, very important news. News. Well, maybe not news, but a question. And this is the question. And I'm not. this is not going to be that long. So you're going to love this. But there is a certain question I've got to ask you. And uh, so we'll take a few minutes and say hello and how y'all doing. Good to see you and hear you. Of course, I don't see or hear you. But if I did, it would be good to see you or hear you. Sometimes when we sit around and think about things, we've all seen what's been going on in Israel. And I've noticed the Internet's blowed up with all these predictions of Christ coming back. Surprise, surprise, right? Uh, when you see these things happen, he said, be looking up for my redemption draweth nigh. And then you got the skeptics say, well, it's always been going on. That's prophesied in Peter. You know, you're talking about the scoffers that say that. But believe me, uh, it's going to, I mean, th things are just unfolding so fast to almost make your head spin, which is exciting to, to me. Uh, I mean, I've been looking for this for a while. So what I want to talk to you today about is a couple of scriptures I want to read, and then that's going to be it. But I want to leave, I want to leave you with a thought because I love you, and I want to see you in heaven. Do you understand that? If you understand that, please just say, yes, Lee, I understand that. Thank you. Amen. Anyway, and you over there said thank you. So thank you for listening. But here's the, here is the, here's the massive question of all questions. Could the Bible be 100% right on what it's predicting? Absolutely. You remember the, you remember infallible, inerrant, inspired. Infallible, inerrant, inspired. Oh my. Inspired, inspired. Anyway. So we know the Bible is the truth. It is the Word of God. It is inspired. It is inerrant. And it is infallible. No mistakes. But we've got all these people predicting now, oh, Jesus is coming back. Well, that's been going on for 2,000 years. He is. But I want to just read you some couple of scriptures today. Get it in your mind, what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make you think. Let me ask you a question. How many of y'all have ever been on a vacation? And... um you were going to a place, but maybe a new place, or maybe not a new place, but you were going. And um, and you needed a place to stay, so you made a reservation. Oh, I know where this is going. Oh, really? That's smart. Anyway, so you made a reservation. And uh, first of all, you if you worked, you had to get off work. You had to make sure it was on your, um, your time off. So you called the hotel. The hotel's got vacancy that week. And you make a reservation. Reservation. Remember that word, reservation. And then, uh, if you're going to a new place, you got to know how to get there. So you get your Google map out and or your ways, and you look at your routes to get there, and you figure out how you're going to get there. And by the time you've done all this now, you've got all this figured out, uh, the day comes. And it's time the family to pack up the car or the bus or whatever you're taking, SUV, whatever it is. And you pack it up and you're ready to go. You fill the car up with gas. If it's electric, you've had it plugged in for 24 hours. And, you're ne and then you're now ready to travel the whole 100 miles. A little joke. Anyway, so now you're ready to go. You've made reservations. You're ready to go. You've packed your bags. Everything's ready. And you get in the car, you plug it in to your GPS, and you're on your way. A few hours later, no matter wherever you're going, maybe longer than that, but you get to your destination, and sure enough, you get to the, the hotel, and the hotel lobbyist uh, is, is there, and you check in, and the room's ready, and you get up there, and you start your vacation. Now, why do I say all that? Because that's really what, and it's a vague, you know, maybe not the best example, but it's a part of what we have to do. And here's what I want to read to you right now. And this is a few scriptures I want to read to you. Matthew 24, 42. 
Now here is my Bible, the Holy Bible, the Word of the Living God. Matthew 24, 42. Here's what it says. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. You don't know. So this is when Jesus is talking to the disciples and they're asking him when he's coming back. We've talked about that in my last podcast. And um, and this was the Jews talking to him about coming back and setting up his kingdom. Let's keep that in mind too. And, but, he, but here's the word. <laughs> I, here's the word I want you to listen to. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come back. And they said, well, and as he goes down the next couple of verses, verse 44 of Matthew 24, he says, Be therefore be ye ready. For in an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. He's telling his disciples, Don't worry about the time, just be ready. Make your reservation. Get your reservation in. And how do you do that? Well, John 3 3 tells us how do we do that. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto my Father but by me. John 3, 3 says, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of God. Acts 4, 12 says, neither is there salvation any other, for there is no other name given under heaven, whereby men must be saved. Acts 4, 12, back there. But anyway, uh, and so these scriptures are very important to your reservation. You must be born again. I even heard a preacher Walking down the street talking about you don't need to repent and all this stuff. I don't want to get into all that, but you do. So anyway, so we got to get ready to meet God. How do you do that? You get saved by the grace of God through grace, for by grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by grace are you saved through faith. That's not of yourself. It's the gift of God. It's not of works, least any man should boast. So we get ready. And we're looking. Okay, now we've gotten ready. I got ready on November 9th, 1975. That's when I got ready. That's when I made my reservation. But from that, from then to now, I've been <laughs> getting ready. And I've been preparing. And I've been doing a lot of things. But anyway. But I want to hear. Here's what else I want to, I want to read to you. How do we know for certain that this is going to happen? I mean, really, folks. I mean, this is what the Bible says. This is what Christians believe all over the world. But how do we really know? Because there's so much evidence. There's so much evidence that Jesus Christ was exactly who he said he was. That he was God the Son, the Son of God. That he was the manifestation of God. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. Uh, Without controversy, as great as that mystery of God in us, for God was manifest in the flesh. Made in the flesh. God was made in the flesh and his name was Jesus Christ. He was God on earth. So now he's he's been with these apostles and these disciples and they've come to him and they've asked him all these questions and he told them all these things and he says, just be watching. Of course, they probably did. But then there was one more. It's a little bit longer, so I'm going to read it to you. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Since I can't memorize, I'm going to read it. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. By the name Theophilus means lover of God. A lot of people, when Luke wrote this, you know, a lot of folks thought, well, maybe Theophilus, well, it could have been a guy or it could have been just his name means lover of God, which is applicable to all of us. We, If you love God, you are Theophilus. I just threw that in for free, no charge. Of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until, listen to this, until the day which he was taken up. Now, this is after the crucifixion. The resurrection, 40 days now. If you remember, and I'll get into that. Hold on. Just remember that 40 days. 40 days. 40. It's amazing, isn't it? 40 days, 40 days, 40 years in the wilderness, all those 40s. 40 days, temptated. I mean, there's a purpose that God does that. So, until, and so he, he tells us the efforts to go and to do and teach the things I've told him. Until the day which he was taken up after he threw the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he chose, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion of many infallible proof, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So after the resurrection, Jesus didn't his public his public appearances and all that was pretty much over. 
And um, now he's dealing with the apostles and their close disciples, and he's teaching them things concerning the kingdom of God. And you can read about those in, in the Gospels, in the book of Acts, which is, you know, the church. And then it says, and I'm going to also say this, the Bible also says if everything that Jesus did was written in a book, said the world could not contain, isn't that amazing? The world couldn't contain the books. <laughs> I mean, folks, amen. I'm just going to put that out with an amen. And then it says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them they should not depart from Jerusalem. Stay there, he says, and wait for the promise of the Father. What is what? What he said, you've heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. And when you therefore come together, they ask him, saying, Well, Lord, what will be at this time? The will you at this time? Will you at this time? What time? And in, <laughs> in the next few days here, restore the kingdom of Israel. This is what he said. He said, It's not for you to know the day, the times, or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Quit worrying about the days and the time. But you shall receive the power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And here we go. This is this is the commandment. The Holy Spirit will come on you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, unto both me, uh, for, uh, for me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then the other most parts of the world. He said, "Here's the most important thing. Once you receive the Holy Spirit, which they did it, you know, at Pentecost, which is 50 days after Christ." Uh, died on the cross just like 50 days after uh, the children of Israel came out of, of, of the Passover Sinai. Anyway, a lot of stuff there. And it said, here's what I'm, I'm trying to get to this. I'm, I'm just really trying to get this. Oh, dang, I forgot again about my phone. Um, sorry about that, folks. i got to turn that off. Anyway, he says, And when he spoke these things, while they beheld him, he was taken up in the cloud and received out of the sight. Gone. Boop. And while they looked steadfast toward heaven, uh, he, as he went up, these two men, angels of God, stood in them by white apparel. And he says this, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which was taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Folks, I don't know about you, but I know, I know that he's coming again. This is my heart. I'm just, I'm just begging you. I, I'm begging. Christ didn't beg. He told him, and he said, "This is what you do. You must be born again." All those things he says, and then he went on his way. And if they believed him, fine. If they didn't, he just shook the dust of the feet and went somewhere else. But I'm begging you to listen to me. We are on the brinks of something huge in this world. What you're seeing now, I believe with all of my heart, and I've seen, you know, we've seen things happen over the last 50 years. But this is the biggie. I think, I, I mean, I really believe that. Because in my heart of hearts, I, you just see everything has come together now. The one world government, the one world church, the one world money system, everything's in place. And the biggest key is Israel and, <laughs> and their enemies. The king of the north, the king of the east, the king of the west, and the king of the south. They're all they're there. Look at it. China, Russia, Iran. And you see the west is everything west of Israel. I mean, unless you go completely around the world. Everything west, that's talking about us. And right now, look around us in the United States. We've got anti-Semites everywhere. They're having parades, praising these Hamas killers for killing all these Jews. Singing, gas the Jews. Folks, I don't know about you, but it, it absolutely busts my heart. Now, I'm going to ask you, and then this is going to be it for today, for today. Are you ready? Have you made your peace with God? I want you to just stop and ask yourself right now, wherever, I don't care if you're driving, listening to this, watching it on YouTube, watching it on Facebook, listening to it on Spotify, wherever you're listening to this, you've got to ask yourself a question. Am I ready to go? I'm talking about to meet God. 
Have you made your peace with Jesus Christ? Do you know Him as your Lord and Savior? Has He, has he touched your heart and opened your eyes to show you that you need to be saved? If He has, fantastic. Praise the Lord. If He hasn't, you need to start praying and asking God to save you. Come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Wash me in your blood. The blood of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 9.22, without the, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Folks, Jesus is coming, and he's coming soon. Israel's in a real pickle over there. Psalms 122, pray for the peace of Israel. Let's pray for them. Let's pray for those that aren't saved. Would you do that with me right now? Would you just close your eyes if you're driving? Don't close your eyes. If you're driving, just pray. Let's pray for the world. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for our families that folks just not say father we are so thankful god that we can bow our heads and know you hear us pray lord our world is in turmoil our families are being broke up people are being slaughtered around the world the world's in bad shape but god you are still absolutely in charge and we pray for our leaders we pray for our churches we pray for our lost people that they'll be saved and then we pray for the saved that they'll be blessed and understand the door is getting ready to open for us and shut for the world. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Folks, I love you. Trust Christ. Get saved. Be born again, and I'll see you in heaven. And listen, I'm not going to I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. If you die without God, you're going to hell, and it's a lake of fire, the Bible says, that burns forever and forever. And I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm just trying to tell you there's coming a judgment one of these days, and it's already really started. It's already started, and there's another podcast I need to do about that strong delusion that they're going to believe a lie. It's coming. Love you. Have a great day. Talk to you soon here on the Crusade for Christ podcast hour. Oh.